I've created a simple list of the worst mechanics to train. I know sounds weird, but the truth is most of you aren't stuck because you need the flashy new flick that came out. It's because you're wasting time training stuff that doesn't matter. If you want to rank up slower, don't let me ruin all these new mechanics for you. But if you're still watching, we'll get into it least to most overrated. Let's get started. If you're new here, this list is coming from my own personal experience, having now coached over 2,000 players inside my private coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. We specialize in taking hard stuck gold through champ ranked players up to Grand Champ in just six weeks or less. And at the time I'm recording this, we're currently at 62 out of 180 spots taken for coaching. These seats will likely be taken within the next 30 days. So if you want to get involved before we sell out and go on pause and have to find more coaches, DM me on Discord with the keyword pause and we can talk details before then. My Discord will be first linked down below and let's get started. Okay, jumping into the mechanics, we're going to be going in order of least overrated to most overrated by the end of the video. So basically number seven on this list will be something that most people know they shouldn't train and know they don't need. But number one, for example, is something that a lot of people think they need. And then I see tons of people, especially in diamond and champ training, that is almost a complete waste of time. Now disclaimer, with that being said, training any mechanic will never make you worse. So when I say a mechanic, mechanic is bad to learn. It's bad in the sense that for how much time you have to spend to learn it, you probably won't get to use it that much. And that's absolutely true. And I'll break down each of these mechanics because some of them are a little weird and situational, but that's the idea. All right. So number seven, the least bad mechanic to learn is something I just, I have to get out of the way. Speed flips. Now I know this is controversial because literally in my other two mechanics videos that I've made, I said that speed flips are an S tier mechanic to learn if you want to rank up fast. And so here's what I mean by this. When I say speed flips aren't essential and that you don't need them to get GC, I say that because there are players who get it without them. One of the biggest weak points that I see with players ranging anywhere from plat to champ is just not having any sort of a reliable kickoff. And the problem is if you're playing without having at base level a consistent kickoff at the start of every single play, you're going to be at a disadvantage. So if you're trying to climb the ranked ladder and you don't have your kickoffs down, this is absolutely where you start. In my opinion, long run, it's great to know the speed flip. And if your goal is to get SSL, you should absolutely just learn it now because it's going to give you a massive advantage over everyone below GC. But the reason I put speed flips on this list is because yes, you don't need them to rank up. Of all the things you can sink time into learning though, they're definitely S tier in terms of the results and how much value you will get out of knowing them. So, um, you know, looking back, I maybe shouldn't have put them on this list, but I kind of wanted to talk about them and I really don't want to remake this list. So on to number six, the two mechanics you were probably expecting to see on this list. I'm just going to group them together. Flip resets and ceiling shots. As many of you know, flip resets and ceiling shots are huge at the top 0.1% and above level. But for everyone below GC2, I would say, don't touch flip resets or ceiling shots. The reason you shouldn't touch these things is not because they'll make you worse, but just because it's not time yet. And odds are, if you try to learn flip resets and ceiling shots before you have the sort of base level mechanics, the base level aerial car control understanding of the game, the harder and the longer it's going to take you to learn these. And even when you do, you're not going to be able to pull them off consistently in game because if you're below GC and you're learning flip resets, it's like building the top of the skill pyramid and you, you still don't have the base. It's it's just going to fall over and you will give up the ball. Second thing, though, and a follow up question that something a ton of players will ask me is, Luke, what about air dribbles? What about double taps? And the way I now explain this to people in my coaching program is that air dribbles and double taps are in a slightly more useful group. So it's going to benefit you more in game to know an air dribble and a double tap before it will say a flip reset or a ceiling shot. Point is, hold off on flip resets and ceiling shots until probably after you've mastered the air dribble and the double tap. And of course, before that, like try to make sure you're fast aerialing properly and you know, all the rest of it, which ugh, the plats never will, the plats never do, but that's the idea. Number five, the fifth most overrated set of mechanics. In my opinion, it's another group, any type 
of fancy flick. So I'm sorry if you are somebody who's trying to learn the breezy flick, the Evo flick, the Moxie flick, literally any flick that is named after somebody, even the Musty flick, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm sorry, Musty. Yes, they're sick to pull off. And if you just want to pull it off in free play for fun to show off, be my guest. But if you're trying to learn these to rank up, please stop. Overall, there are two main problems with learning any of these flicks. Number one has to do with setup time. All of these flicks take a significant time to set up, if you can even pull them off consistently. And that setup time is really just not something you're gonna have in most ranked games. The second problem with all of these fancy flicks is just the fact that they're flicks. What I mean by that is if you haven't heard my stance on flicks before, I'm very much on the side of a player called Flakes when it comes to flicks. You see, the problem with a flick is even if you do flick the ball by that first defender in a 3v3 example, let's say, naturally, flicks are going to send the ball super far away from your car and likely toss possession to anyone on the opposing team waiting behind their first man. That's why just in general, flicks shouldn't be your go-to unless there to beat, say, a last man. And in most cases, simple power side cuts, single jump pops, or any other outplay you can make that puts the ball around one defender but doesn't send it so far away that your team loses possession, any of those options are going to be better than any of the fancy flicks. And so for that reason, if your goal is to rank up, just, just cut the fancy flicks, move on to number four. Number four, the fourth most overrated mechanic. This one has to do with the meta again. It's any fancy dash. So just in the same way that a basic flick is still super relevant, a basic wave dash is absolutely essential. But knowing how to chain dash, knowing how to donkey dash, knowing how to wall dash, that stuff you really don't need to learn. I'll confess, I learned the wall dash just because I wanted to be able to celebrate after I scored a goal and chain a bunch of dashes together. And But having now known how to wall dash for the past three months, I can tell you I haven't used it once in a ranked game. So if you're spending time mashing your keyboard or breaking controllers over trying to learn the wall dash, save yourself the energy. The only type of dash you need to get SSL, in my opinion, is wave dash. Stick to that and you'll be fine. Number three, the third most overrated mechanic is pinches. I'll be the first to admit, I love pulse fire videos just as much as the next guy. <laughs> but unfortunately, in terms of ranking up, pinches have got to go way down on the list. The reason pinches aren't that useful to know is A, if you do pull them off successfully, you're basically just throwing the ball away super, super fast, which sometimes is useful. Sometimes you get a clear, but most times just tosses possession. And B, I was going to say when you can control them, you can't really control them. And I think that's the whole point. Like, even if you get really good at pinches, you can't really control where they go. I don't know, maybe maybe I'm just not good enough, but when I watch people train pinches, even the pulse fires of the world who spam them more than anybody else, there's still just the 50% chance that the pinch doesn't work at all or goes the complete opposite direction you thought it would, or you just headbutt into the wall and then and your car just bounces right off. And for all those reasons, the reward of getting a pinch just isn't that good. And the risk of all the different things that might happen when you try it, it's too high. So pinches for fun, not for ranking up. Finally, moving on to two, and this is one you probably wouldn't expect on this list, and I, I might regret this, but number two is passing. Now, before you go into your ranked games and never pass to me again, I want to be clear, passing is an absolutely fundamental part of high-ranked gameplay. The problem with passing below GC2 or GC3 is just lack of consistency. Anytime you want to pull off a passing play, you're going to have to commit two players on your team to do it. And so even if you have the perfect setup or the perfect situation to go for the pass, let's say you're champ ranked, you have to rely on two champs to both make the touch on the ball that they wanted to make correctly. 
And I know that might sound stupid, but relying on two champ players to both make a controlled touch on the ball back to back, that's like a 50-50 toss up. So for that reason, I recommend, especially if you're solo queuing, and, and this is just what I tell the people I'm coaching, we should generally not be positioning or going for passes. Yes, long-term, you wanna learn how to pass the ball. You wanna learn how to have that team vision, but below grand champ, it's probably just safer to position in front and behind rather than side to side and, you know, commit all your team's resources on these passing plays that just don't work out half the time. <laughs> Finally, moving on to number one, the worst mechanic that I see trained the most, honestly, all the way up to SSL that you should just stop training is redirects. The reason redirects are one of the most sneaky, bad things to focus on is because they seem like they would be super useful to train. Yes, improving redirects will give you better car control. It will allow you to make more precise touches on the ball, and that alone will benefit you all around the field. The problem with redirects, however, is that in order to pull one off, it means you must have been positioned upfield in front of the play out of position in the first place. So right off the bat, we virtually only use this mechanic when we're in a bad position. That's not a good place to start. Secondly, in order for you to pull off the redirect, you'll probably need to receive a pass from your teammate. Once again, below GC, below SSL, we're committing two resources to go for a single shot. In most cases, the pass is going to fall through or the redirect, which is hard to hit is going to fall through. Or if you do get it on net, it's going to be a weak shot. Redirects will almost never result in goals and almost always be stopped before they get to the goal line. And finally, the third reason, and I, I could go on forever about why redirects are bad, is when players that I coach and that I see play get good at redirects, it feeds back, and then they cherry pick and sit on the opposing back wall waiting for passes more, which just, it's just a vicious cycle. You get good at redirects, so you think you're going to use them. You sit upfield all the time waiting for passes. You never get them or you never score them. So you think you need to get better at redirects. And then you go train more redirects in training packs because there's a million redirect training packs. And then you just stay in diamond forever. So that is my dissertation on redirects. Yes, they're sick. We all want to be Justin, I know. But until you're out of champ, let's put redirects on pause and let's focus on rotating out behind your teammates. Okay, those were my controversial opinions. Let me hear it down in the comments below. And if you now want to know what you should actually focus on training, now that we know what not to train, I've got two videos on the best mechanics to learn that have got really positive feedback you can check out. One I'll have linked on screen here is called the nine must know mechanics to get grand champ. These are like the essential mechanics in my opinion. Or if you're a little more advanced up here, I'll have a video called the best mechanics to learn at your rank. That's a sort of tier list style that goes further down the list with all the things I think you should learn if your goal is to rank up. Check those out. DM my Discord if you have more questions or you're interested in coaching, and I'll see you in one of those videos.